This is Herman from SPL. We're here at the Frankfurt Messe booth. Um, and I'm going to run you through a few products that we're showing here uh, for the first time in Europe from our new Messering series. Now, if you look at this nice desk over here, um, we have all our Messering products uh, built in. And there are um, red versions available on the left side and, and black versions available on here. So there is a choice in colors, whatever you like fits the bill. Um, now, um, we already had introduced um, the iron mastering compressor um, three years ago, and this has received such a tremendous response that we decided to move on in, in, into uh, yeah, analog mastering. Uh, all products that you see here are utilizing our 120 volt rail technology. Now, just to, to give you an idea what that means, because many people think that it's going to be AC voltage, but it's DC, so it's internal opera operating voltage. And um, if you take standard technology that is using ICs, then the internal operating voltage will never exceed um, 44 volts, plus and minus 22. And the amount of voltage that you put into into uh, the secondary uh, processing uh, of a product will be so de determine the headroom that it can work with. With the standard technology, if you are operating with the standard duct and you're putting out plus 18, plus 20 dBU, that means that on the analog side, you're already saturating the IC-based products. There is no headroom. And if you apply EQ and you boost something, it's going to be going into distortion. With 120 volt rail technology, you bring up that headroom to plus 30, 40 dB. So there is over 10 dB more headroom in these products. And that's the reason why the mastering engineers these days opt for products running on a high rail. And SPL delivers the highest rail in the industry. 120 volt rail, nothing is there that matches this. Okay, now here are the, product, the products that, this, that we have in this line. I started out with the um, iron mastering compressor, and when you do compression, well, you need EQing as well. Above that, there is the PQ, it's a mastering EQ, five band, fully parametric, and the specialty is that you can switch each band to be either proportional or constant Q. Um, and each band has a switch function on top where you can say that this boost and cut control is plus and minus 20 dB normally or when you set it to quarter gain then it's just plus and minus 5 dB. So that allows to extremely fine tune um, your EQing. All of our mastering products feature in this middle section an auto bypass function. Now that is that the, that the unit switches to bypass on its own without showing it to you, the, uh, the, product, the LEDs will stay on but in the background the relays will switch and you can buy, you can, you're not deceived by the, by the visual impression or by the sheer act of switching between on and off. You can just totally focus on what you hear. So the next thing that we introduced is, um, is a revamp of a classic that we did a long time ago, like 10 years ago, that's the PASEC. And the PASEC is a passive equalizer, like the old Pultec equalizers, for example. But we took this principle a, a few steps further. Now you need to understand that in a passive EQ, there is, it's just one filter. And all the controls you see are controlling one filter. In this filter, you subtract a frequency by, by, uh, by just subtracting that specific band. But if you boost the frequency, you need to subtract all other bands. And at the end of that process, they, you have a, a level diminished signal that needs to be lifted up to go back to the original level. And here, the 120 volt rail technology kicks in because it has such a high headroom and it, has, it is, operates extremely noise free. Just to give you an idea, DSD audio, or the best digital you can get, is about 120 dB. Now this does signal to noise on 116 and then it has 30, 40 dB of headroom on top. So that's the range we're talking here. So now, this is what we do on the processing side. 
EQing and active and passive, active and passive EQing and, and, and master compression. But you need to control all of this in your control room. So that's why we decided to also revamp our dual channel mastering console, the DMC, which you have here. Um, the DMC is basically your monitor controller, your switchboard, your recording device. You connect everything in your studio to this device. So you can select between inputs and these inputs are being used to be mastered. So you have an insert chain in the center over here where you can insert products into that process. You, can, you already ha also have the auto bypass function here. Um, you do trimming, you can do active gain rights on a pot, you can compare to sources, you select your speakers, um, you, can, you can pair a subwoofer with a speaker by simply pressing both until they flash and then each time you switch on this specific speaker the subwoofer goes with it. That's one thing. Another thing is, which is very important, once you start to master you usually change levels and uh, your, what you master may, might, might be louder so you need to compensate the, the loudness level so this is what you do with this little pot over here it's I got a plus or minus 10 dB range so you can diminish your process signal by the value um, that you sonically perceive that it is louder so that you only compare the audio sound of aspect of it and not being fooled by the fact that it's just a few dB louder. But now the trick is you can also couple this let's say with an insert so you you press an uh, input sorry you press these two uh, until they flash and now each time you you select an input the um, the, mo the loudness compensation is switched on automatically as well. So thereby you, you don't have, and you have other options, you can do the same with the insert, you can do the same with the source. That means wherever you start to compare, you can match this and then only use one, con one switch to also initiate the, um, the loudness compensation. So does it remember the loudness compensation level for each different set? No, it can't. It's, this is not a digitally stored value. This is an analog pot up here. So usually you decide on, on what you want to compare. You set the loudness level there and, and you, you switch it. Once you move over to something else, you have to find out what that level is. Sure. And, you, and once you reworked it, then a stored value wouldn't make any sense because you would have to reset that again. Sure. It's, it's a a, yeah, it's a work in progress, so type of thing. Now, uh, SPL has always been very strong uh, uh, involved in uh, surround. We've been the first company producing the SPL Atmos, uh, which was a 5.1 microphone system back in '89, and um, we've. We've made monitor controllers for, for 5.1, 7.1, but now it's time for immersive audio. Our early mastering dice, the multi-channel ones, were eight-channel devices, like Bob Ludwig still operates with this uh, big desk, or um, Simon Hayworth in uh, the Super Audio Recording in, in, in Devon, in England, um, uses it. But now it's time to have more channels because we're stepping into the era of immersive audio or some call it 3D or, uh, audio by Dolby Atmos or by uh, Aura 3D. So therefore you need to have um, uh, a multi-channel device that at least has 16 channels. Well, that's the best option because that's the production. The maximum channels of production is 16. Um, and this is why we came up with the MC16. It's this unit on top here. So with 16 on switches um, and with the possibility to, to store um, certain speaker arrays, so let's say I would just want to store this or I make another setting like this for example and I just press this button and until it flashes. So now it remembers, as you can see, the settings of speakers and that makes it very easy to compare uh, uh, speaker settings as well as a solo function that allows you to, to solo a, a, a speaker or multiple speakers and you can also store solo speakers and that's for example if you only want to listen to your to your top speakers 
the ceiling speakers. So you make a group from the ceiling speakers and the minute you need to listen to them, well, you just press your, your presets. So very straightforward, but the kicker is the following. Many people use the left and right and the subwoofer in, uh, in a stereo setup as well as in a multi-channel setup. And they don't have specific multi-channel speakers for left and right alongside with a stereo. So that would mean if you go, if you if you select a stereo project and you work with the DMC and you and then do a surround project where all the processing usually happens in the box, you need to only have a monitoring controller for 16 channels, but then you need to re-plug the left and right and the subwoofer, and nobody does that. And it's, it's a pain, so you wouldn't want to do it either. So we thought, okay, what we're going to do is, we're going to make the DMC to be, to be linked with the MC16 in a way that left and right and subwoofer are being passed over to the MC16 when this is in control. And there's only one thing you need to do for that. You see on speakers A, and that's why A has this circle around, you press this for a few seconds, boom, and now, now the DMC is dead, it's sort of in a sleep mode, and left and right and subwoofer are now controlled with this 16 gang analog pot. And once you're done with that, you simply, when you want to go back to the stereo, you just press this button again, and as you can see, it recalls the last setting, and you're back to your stereo operation. That's a really clever idea. Yeah, I think that's pretty much uh, to take for a trade show thing. But uh, I hope you had fun, and I hope you uh, it could give you a bit of information. You can keep of that, keep a bit of that information in your head uh, once you when you think about where you want to go in the future. Um, I think we have a few answers for these questions at hand. Yeah. Excellent. Well, Thanks thank very you. much indeed.